Hi, this is Mr. McCourt doing a screencast for your reverse classroom. The topic is going to be digital museum exhibits. Uh, I'm going to go over four topics pretty quickly because we don't have a lot of time. The topics will be uh, where to find digital museum resources, what they are, um, how to use them, and then just throwing around some ideas to uh, possibly think about for yours. Now, to find them, there's this great education blog by Dr. Keeler, um, who has mainstreamed a, these digital museums from uh, an ISTE conference. So, you can find them at christykeeler.com slash educational virtual museums .html. If you search virtual museums in PowerPoint, it should be like the third uh, source. Now, on her website, you can see it tells you what they are um, and it gives you some samples and then it gives you these free templates so she's done a lot of the heavy lifting where the resources that you'll be using she's already made them for you so what they are and this is uh, an example from the website uh, the Iroquois by Ryan Keeler a fifth grade student um, this is his PowerPoint it looks pretty normal from here, but when you actually load it into the slideshow, it gives you a perspective museum that you can actually navigate by clicking on these different rooms. So here Ryan made a room about Iroquois food. He's doing an Iroquois theme. It has all these different pictures of foods on the wall. When you click them, he's given you information about the foods. So here he's got a picture of an elk or a deer. Uh, he's given you his source location because he's a good scholar. Um, then when we return the entryway, we have the home, Iroquois Homes. Right, so it's these really great resource that allows you to move around. He's also got a profile. One of these is Ryan. I don't know which. Probably the fifth grader in the middle. Um, then it gives you some uh, bibliographical information. Right, so this is the resource that you could potentially use. It's a great idea and it's really fun and interactive. So getting out of there, um, going back to the site, she has these virtual templates. So I'm going to click on one and I'm going to open it up really quickly and show you how to start using them. So as you can see, it's a lot like the other one. It's a little smaller. She has bigger templates with more rooms and some with more artifacts. In this case, um, this one has four rooms and it has three artifacts per room and uh, one in the middle. So to show you how to use some stuff, first thing you would want to do is you can change the text in these boxes. So in this case, you would want to change your museum name. So Mr. McCord's Museum of Awesome. Um, so I got there. Um, these different slides on the side will get you to your different places in your museum when you're editing. So, the, for instance, if I wanted to click Curator in the slideshow, right, I go and I visit my Curator, I have this area. But over here on the navigational side, I have this Curator slide. So here's where I'd put my information. So, Mr. McCourt biographical information he's a swell guy right and then over here I wanted to add a picture so this is the basic way that you add pictures to any of these boxes you get rid of your text first and you click on the box and you right click you go to format shape now at the top there's an option for fill after that you'll click picture and you'll choose your picture so here I want to go to my screencast pictures and here is my Mr. McCourt picture. Um, make sure that you click off rotate picture with shape. You don't want to do that. So now it will warp your picture to be in perspective with the actual shape. And now there's a picture of Mr. McCourt on the wall with his Star Wars uh, finger puppets. So going back to my room if I go uh, back to my lobby, so if I went to slideshow, now I click to visit the curator, that information would all be here, right? 
So say I wanted to get some stuff for room number one. I go in here, I got artifact two, same thing. Delete the text, format shape, add a picture, choose the picture. So here, let's, this is just a for instance, I was making a museum exhibit about the relationship between Ebola and ISIS in the media. Uh, see, this is what happens when you forget to click rotate picture width off. Alright, so now it's right because I clicked off that option and I have this picture. So I have this artifact here and I want it to have it say information when I actually go to room one and I go to this area, right? But it doesn't have anything. So I go and I find that artifact 2 on the options on the side. Where is artifacts 2? Here. And I get my information. So it's a political cartoon 1. You will make sure that you get more information on what it yours is. I just am giving a for instance here. And then you come in and you do the same thing. Format shape, picture, choose picture, and I will choose the same picture. So I think that's the one. Yeah. Rotate picture with shape off and then you tell about what it is new picture. You can change your font colors, all the same options that you would normally have in PowerPoint presentation, but the way that this works is that on this original picture within the actual room, if you click hyperlink and add hyperlink, the it is linked to the other slide instead of like a normal website like you would when you post a website. Now the way this works is on the anchor location you can click location and you have your options to make other slides. So if you make other slides and create other rooms or add other rooms from other templates to the PowerPoint, you can link by clicking on these different things. So in this case, a political cartoon is the name of the slide, and that's what I want to link it to. So I click OK, and now these are all normally linked up the way they're supposed to be, so that when you go in, click there, that same link I did, it brought me to here, and that's all the information I had. So in the case of your Enola Gay project, you can have art, physical artifacts maybe in the middle of rooms, little pedestals like this that can go. You can have um, a lot of different areas to go. So maybe you'd have room one for strategic bombing and World War II to explain how people did bombing raids. Um, maybe room two is about the devastation of Hiroshima. Maybe room three is about the actual training of the pilots um, and maybe room four is about the uh, creation of the nuclear bomb and its uh, actual uh, development so you know there's just ideas you have a lot of options with this um, back on the website I mean you have up to five rooms and you can even add more rooms with these uh, virtual rooms where she's already created what you need so, you know, your options in this um, are pretty vast. Just make sure that you cite your sources and uh, be creative. You can change the colors. She has tutorials on the how to make your own uh, virtual museum room. So if you really wanted to get creative and completely reformat the look and feel of the museum, you have that option. Uh, so do your best and um, start thinking about what you'll actually want to do for your project. You don't have to make your own museum from scratch because, of course, it's only a two-day project, but yeah, do your best. That's it.